All right, so hey everyone, it's me, Narada, African Hair God. My name is Narada, for all the new people. It's spelled N-A-R-A-D-A. -A -A. And my name is of Sanskrit origin or Hindi. And it means wise teacher or one who gives great knowledge or some something like that. Um, and so... That is kind of the theme of this video here because uh, Cam left this comment um, and asked me if I have plans to pursue teaching cosmetology at some point in my career. And I get asked this question quite a bit on my live Q&As, which we actually have a live Q&A coming next Wednesday on October the 25th. Um, so I will be sure to leave a link in the comment section so that you can um, at least set up your notifications so you don't miss that. I do a horrible job of promoting the Q&A, so I, I need to do better. That's my fault. Um, and I have thought about this for quite some years. And strangely enough, all my life I have been somewhat of a teacher or mentor in some way shape or form um even when i was working my way through uh college i was actually a teacher assistant for fourth and fifth grade students in the inner city atlanta uh school and that was interesting <laughs> um then after that i worked with um children in the the Boys and Girls Club, and I think I did that for a year. Yeah, I think I did that for a year. Um, that was cool. Um, I knew kids were not for me. Um, I just, I'm good with kids, but only, like, good kids. Like, the, the, the bad kids, the trouble kids, I don't do well with that. So, yeah, I always knew teaching was kind of my niche, it's in my blood. My mom's a teacher. My aunt's a teacher. My sister's a teacher. My name means teacher. Uh, I literally can't escape it. <laughs> so, um, and I think for the most part, I think you all can see that I would make um, a pretty good teacher as well. Um, so, my thoughts on this is that while I do, while I don't plan to be behind the chair forever... Um, I do at some point want to pivot uh, my career and go towards education in some way, shape, or form. And I think I'm a natural at that, honestly. I think um, I have a way with um, digesting information and knowledge and um, just explaining it in a way where people can better more easily conceptualize the things that I'm saying. I need to work on my public speaking. I'm not too confident about that. Um, but I think that will come in time just from speaking. Strangely enough, we are, me and Henny are working towards um, starting natural hair classes at in December. So we're in the works with that. So it's interesting that you asked that question. It's going to be very limited seats for that. It's going to be free, but there are going to be stipulations. We're um, going to teach natural hair to um, the everyday woman. You have to be willing to um, be recorded, of course, because we're going to be recording footage or live streaming or something. Um, you also need to be open and comfortable with people touching and handling your hair because we're going to be learning off of each other um, and teaching off of each other's hair. Um, and there's going to be other stipulations to that, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into that when the time comes. But um, I think that's going to be great. And the reason why we're making us, making um, the participants work with each other's hair is because you really cannot teach natural hair off of a mannequin. I don't care what curl pattern has been steam processed into the hair. It's just not the same. It's just not the same. And everybody here comes in so many different forms and facets that it's, it's easier to just learn off of each other. So I'll keep y'all updated on that. 
But to answer the question, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. To answer the question, um, yeah, I would like to pivot into education. Um, I thought about, and me and Henny have tossed around this idea of opening up a beauty school um, where we would not even just focus on natural hair care, but just teach cosmetology in the way that it needs to be taught. Um, we've had an experience in the past where we tried to actually go back to our old beauty school and um, give back to the students there and just kind of prep them and prepare them for the business aspect of doing hair because that's something that's not really covered at beauty school and needless to say the students were not receptive at all um they actually like tried to get on social media and say some disparaging things and yeah so um on top of that i think that timing is everything and i do not feel y'all know i have very little faith in the cosmetology industry i call the cosmetology industry trash in like every video because that's literally where it is um people's faith in stylists and in cosmetology is at an all-time low and the only way that that is going to change is if there is a widespread movement among black women um to expect demand and ask more from their stylists. Um, and we're not there yet. This year has been a very interesting year for me. Um, there, for the most part, has been a good year. There were definitely some highs and lows. And it's funny how everything played out this year. Because I really started to question my motivation for continuing with pushing for natural hair education. Um, Y'all heard me talk about this plenty of times, about me going viral on TikTok and just getting the negative response and feedback that I got from it. Um, it really, really turned me off. And it's funny because me and Henny, at least like once a year, we have this kind of we go through this little phase where we're like, man, fuck this industry, fuck doing natural hair, fuck trying to make black women love their hair, like, fuck all this shit, and we just gonna, like, sell out, <laughs> we gonna quit, we gonna, <laughs> we gonna do whatever makes money, and just, like, we just be over it sometimes, like, to do what we do, and I know, like, sometimes I come off very intense and even emotional sometimes, but it's really, really hard to not get emotionally invested in the work that we do. And it's funny because I think back to all the times we've watched like other stylists on the watch parties and we watched them like break down and cry because they wanted more for their clients, but their clients did not want it for themselves. And I think about like, um, what was her name? Sitting pretty on YouTube. Um, she was cool for me for cool with me for a while until she actually saw my reaction of her and ever since I haven't seen a comment from her so I think she was kind of turned off by that um even um Jennifer Rose even though we don't agree on a lot of things um I can tell she's been very passionate in this industry um and a lot of people will say we have a lot of you know parallels between us uh commonalities I don't know about that, but <laughs> I, I I can agree that we both can be um, very intense and passionate about um, what we do, just in different ways. And so, looking back on how I responded in those situations, I feel like it was a little premature, and I kind of mocked and maybe made fun of how they were so invested and now that I am reaching 10 years um, with having our business, our salon, I completely understand, like, where that comes from. 
and um, I know Sid and Pretty actually walked away from doing hair for that reason, like just like seeing dealing with the psychological aspect of doing black women's hair. There's so many skeletons in y'all closet with addressing like your insecurities around your hair. And I, I know this, this, it sounds terrible when I was like, you all, you got skeletons in your closet. You got to address, you know, but that's what it is. Like, um, a lot of you have not addressed a lot of these issues and a lot of you have not done the work and it comes up, um, when we are working with you to get your hair to your hair goes to its healthiest point. And sometimes it can be very difficult and challenging for stylists to work with their clients because their clients will, they're either not ready to do the work or they will work against the direction that you're trying to guide them to. So the first thing I've learned about this industry is that you cannot be invested in the outcome. So when people sit in your chair, you give them all of yourself, but once they walk out the door, it's like, you know, you wipe your hands of it, and when they come back in, they come back in, and you take care of it, but um, to go back to teaching, um, I just don't think that it's the right time. It just does not feel like the right time for me to seriously pursue that. Um, I feel like there's still so much more for me to like learn and grow and develop as a stylist. Even this whole summer, like with the whole curly cut situation and just seeing like how the black girl curl saga has played out and also um, just handling clients who've been getting those curly cuts and um, abstaining from using like leave-ins and oils and stuff. I've learned so much from that whole ordeal. Um, I learned that I can't assess natural hair in its natural state as well as I thought I did. Because um, a lot of those clients, I would look at their hair and assess in its natural state. And I'd be like, oh, your hair fine. And then I blow it out and it's like a completely different story. So that was a huge learning situation. Uh, we're still trying to get to the bottom of that, um, and it's, it's difficult for me to do that because I'm not in the ins and outs of their method, so it's literally impossible for me to pinpoint what's the cause when I'm not living or experiencing or doing the method and watching it the damage slowly take place over time. If I was using their method... On my clients, I could be able to pinpoint it over time. But because I'm literally seeing these people come in, I get a snapshot of what they've been doing over the course of a year. And it's like trying to solve a murder mystery with just one picture. Like, it's, it's, it's hard to figure it out. Like, what killed your hair? I don't know. I don't know. Um, and... I just think that people aren't, I know that you guys would appreciate it, but I think I still need to build my following in my platform and build my brand a bit more. Um, there's still a lot of people who don't know of me, about me, and my approach to things. And maybe I don't go about it the right way, and maybe I don't do enough to promote, um, and put myself out there, but I've always been of the belief that things will happen for me the way they were intended. Um, I'm actually going to post the YouTube short of this, but I remember saying back in college, I must have been in like my sophomore year of college, I was like, one day I want to own my salon and yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. And literally like just a couple years later, uh, not even a couple of years later, but even just a few years later, I ended up becoming a co-owner of our salon. So speaking um, words or speaking affirmations to yourself really does bring that 
forth, you know, um, so it's important to just speak positivity, think positive thoughts, um, and speak those affirmations to yourself because the more you speak it, you're going to speak it into existence. Um, and maybe for me, I feel like I'm not ready yet. I still need to grow and develop as a person before I become a teacher. Um, my mouth is reckless. My patience is needs some work. Um, I'm working on the nice, nasty tone. Like, sometimes you ain't got to be rude and shady. You can be, like, subtle shady. And so I'm working on that. Like, sometimes you need to just be subtle shady when you need to check a bitch but still be professional. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm working on just how I navigate social media and speak to people because I, I know I cannot continue to carry on this way if I plan to work, you know, globally and teach people all over the world, which is ultimately what I would like to do. Um, I would not like to just stay here in the U.S. And honestly, I'm leaving y'all at some point. I'm not staying here because the way this country is headed, people out here is tripping. And, I mean, everybody got their issues in other countries, but I don't know. I've been hearing some good things in other places, and I can deal with a little subtle racism and discrimination. Like, I mean, we we deal with that shit here on a daily basis, so what are we really afraid of, you know? But, um, yeah, um, I don't know. It, it, everything will happen when it's, when it's time. I know that it's a destiny that I really cannot escape or walk away from. <laughs> It's, it's, it's just, it's going to happen. I know it. I feel it. It's going to happen. Like, everything in my life is preparing me for that phase um, of my life in my career. So, um, I'm just taking it one day at a time. And who knows what will happen, when it will happen, how it will happen. But, I know it's going to happen. So, um, hope that answers your question. Thanks for listening to this long drawn out uh answer but i just wanted y'all to be able to kind of get a little peek into my mind um to speak on the experience with the going back to beauty school and speaking to the cosmetology students um they just lack maturity they just lack maturity um, a lot of them, I could tell, jumped into cosmetology school right after high school. And even my experience in beauty school, a lot of those people, even though they were grown, they were still stuck in high school, um, just mentally, psychologically. Um, there's so much. I know I have a perspective that is needed to elevate the industry. Um, just like that was the reason why I even started my YouTube channel. Cause I felt like I had a perspective um, over 13 years ago that nobody else was giving on YouTube. And, and by that, I mean, there weren't any males really talking about their experience with their natural hair journey on the level that a lot of women were at the time. And I did not expect my channel to expand or grow and develop or even us building this community the way that we have. Um, and so I think the same thing is going to happen um, when it comes to me teaching and education. Um, look how long it took me to get to 100K. <laughs> you know, it, it literally took over 13 years. <laughs> Um, and now I'm just like kind of, ever since then, I've just been growing and expanding and reaching more and more people. Um, so like I said, I just need to work on myself, um, work on my mouth and <laughs> not be so combative. I'm, I'm getting there slowly. Like, I, I don't think y'all realize like all the times I really could be going in on people. I'm really not. 
So I think I think I've been doing pretty good. I'm just not there yet. So we gonna see. We gonna see. So thanks again for watching and listening, everybody. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, be blessed.